Hey everybody, we're back working on the Prius today. Um, I just got this box in the mail from my friend Ned. Ned, thanks for sending that out. Uh, including the current sensor, which I don't think there's any problems with at all, but really the important part was this entire little wire harness. And this is kind of goofy because I really, um, it looks like I only needed the shortest little part out of all of this, which is just this little bit right here. The mice completely chewed through those wires. Um, but the whole thing is a combined wire harness and unfortunately these other wires go back in the battery. So I'm hoping I can maybe just replace this, plug it into the current sensor, but let the other wires hang out there, reboot the car and see if we can clear that error message. So just as a reminder, mice got into the battery and right back in here, uh, they literally chewed through a number of wires and for anybody who said, oh, just use a little uh, liquid electrical tape or splice them back together, uh, not so easy. Um, I pulled all the wires clear of each other so they wouldn't short or anything. Um, tried testing the car again, nope, no good. And also they're very, very short wires. I mean, the whole thing is only, you know, a couple of inches long um, between the battery ECU and the actual current sensor. And there's just not enough there even to, to splice really. Um, replacing the wire harness is the right way to go. So what I'm going to try to do is see if I can just unplug this uh, from the battery ECU here and the current sensor here, plug in the new wire harness, let the, uh, the temperature sensors just hang out and reboot the car, see if that'll do it. Okay, I just got the wire harness unplugged. There's the plug that went into the, uh, the battery ECU. And here's the end that went into the current sensor. Look at those wires, just all, all chewed up. Um, and then part of the same harness right here uh, is going on top of the battery pack to that sensor up there. But I still, I can't pull this away because the other end of it down there goes under the battery pack. But I think what I'm gonna do first is just take my uh, new harness and plug it into the ECU and the current sensor and let the other wires just dangle because those are just sensors. I just popped on the new wire harness. Uh, the other, the sensors are just out. They're not properly installed, but I put the service plug back in and should be able to restart the car now. So at first the dashboard was still lit up like a Christmas tree. Uh, I turned the car on and off a couple of times and I went into the diagnostic mode and did eventually get that all cleared out. Uh, after that, the scan gauge was showing uh, no more error codes. I was also able to shift the car into gear, something I couldn't do before, and the engine was running and generating back to the battery. So it looked like the new wire harness was going to solve the problem, but I still needed to get the sensor wires into the battery pack itself. So I pulled the orange service plug, I disconnected the orange power cables from the battery to the car, I pulled all the bolts holding the thing down in place, and then I worked on starting to physically get the battery out of the vehicle, which was not so easy. Next, I removed the small bolts holding the cover on and took the cover off. Then I got smart and actually got out some sawhorses, put this up on sawhorses so it'd be at a nice ergonomic working height. Here's another view of the mouse damage, a little easier to see now that this is out in the sun. Uh, ugh, darn mice, just a mess. Uh, what I had to do though for disconnecting the orange cables here is I couldn't get the negative one off without removing the current sensor first. So over here, a couple of screws, pulled those out, removed the current sensor, then I could unhook the wire. And underneath there were three studs coming up that I needed to unbolt to take this whole end part off. I unplugged everything going to the battery ECU and could take that out. I also disconnected the orange cables from the service plug to the battery. Once all that was done, I could get this kind of entire end section off, removed, and out of the way. Here's the wire. This goes to the current sensor. Then on the other end of this, the green wires here goes up on top, goes all the way down to here. Um, but this other part of this it goes down under the battery pack, and that's what I gotta get at now. 
Next, I got out a piece of plywood as a protected material to flip the battery over on, and I'm being careful with the sheet metal. Um, the sheet metal bends real easy, so you gotta be careful not to bend it while flipping the battery over. Unfortunately, this isn't a simple to remove cover. There's actually a little bolt going into every single cell module, and I'd have to unscrew every single one of those to get the cover off. So here's some time lapse for you of me removing all of those bolts going into the cell modules. And then after that I was able to actually remove the sheet metal cover itself. So I had to do all that to get to these wires here, uh, which are just temperature sensors. They're nothing too fancy, but they all come to that same little wire harness down here that the current sensor went to. But I should be able to just unclip these now. And I'll have to look to see how to remove this piece here because it runs through there. This actually worked out great. All I did was I laid the new wire harness right, uh, right next to the old one, uh, removed these clips. They're just plastic. They pop right off and then clipped the new sensor in right where the old one was. Uh, I just did that across the number of clips uh, on the battery pack here. Very, very straightforward, real easy. The part where the wire harness passes through is actually just a really big plastic clip. Um, it just popped right off, and then the existing wire harness I could unsnap from there and pull out of the way. Then I just snapped the new one in and snapped that whole big black plastic clip just right back in place. Couldn't be easier. With the new wire harness in, I could put the cover back on, but again, remember all these little bolts are actually going into the cell modules themselves. So I hand threaded those in, then I just kind of tightened them down with a screwdriver. But uh, you never want to over tighten anything going straight into the cell modules, so I looked up the spec and uh, apparently these are supposed to be 48 inch pounds, so I went and got myself a proper torque wrench and I torqued down every single one of these. After that, I flipped the battery pack back over. So now that we're back right side up, I'm just gonna replace this wire from the old harness with this wire from the new harness. Just has a little pin down here. So right there, that's just a little air temperature sensor for the air on top of the battery pack. So I just swapped to the new sensor and fed the new wires down where the old ones were. Okay, ready for this stuff to go back on. So this component hooks back on with these three studs here. So here's kind of the whole why we're doing this at all. Uh, and that is this wire harness right here. So on the one end, it's going to go into the battery ECU. Then on the other, it goes down here into the current sensor. I had to connect the battery wires back up, both from the service disk connect to the battery pack, and then also here are the main power wires coming up to the contactors. I also had to make sure to torque those down to the proper spec. After that, I could put the lid back on the battery pack and then bolt it in place. After that, it was time to put the battery back in the car. Uh, it is doable with one person, uh, carefully, although it would be easier with an assistant. Then it's just a matter of getting the battery in place and loosely bolting it down. After that, it's really more of a jigsaw puzzle, just remembering how everything went back together. Like on the right-hand side, there's some air vents I didn't quite remember exactly how they went, so I ended up messing with the lid of the battery pack again, even though I really didn't need to. Over on the business end of the battery, there's a ground that needs to go to the battery ECU, and then it's just a matter of plugging in the remaining wire harness connections. 
the high voltage wires connect to the other side of the contactor, so those go down onto these posts with nuts on top, and then I used a torque wrench to make sure that those were torqued down appropriately. Okay, so here I was kind of doing things a little out of order. I ended up taking that cover off because I couldn't quite figure out the vents on the right there. Um, I got the cover back on and I, I did eventually get the vents right. Uh, trust me on this one, but it's kind of a jigsaw puzzle how the whole thing goes back together. Next, the cover goes on over the contactors and the battery ECU and gets the bolts holding it down in place. After that, this piece goes over the top and connects to the unibody of the car. I forgot to film installing this black bar you see at the bottom of the screen over the top of the battery. Apparently that is not there in all of the Gen 2s, but this was a 2004 model year, so if your car doesn't have that, it just might not have it. Um, after that, it was a matter of reinstalling the seats. Um, I was actually starting to have a little bit of trouble with my wrist at this point, so I'm kind of fumbling around with it, but the seats are actually very straightforward. It's just four bolts, get the bolt through, uh, drive it down, and the seats are back in. And then over on the side, I start reinstalling the interior panels. Uh, again, pretty straightforward. It's just a 10 millimeter bolt, a couple of snaps, and a screw. Reinstalling the interior panel on the left side, it's the exact same thing other than there's a small light over here. Uh, for me, it was actually easiest to flip the thing upside down to plug the light in. And then this part snaps down right over the top of the battery case, and there's some Velcro on the top part, so that just goes up onto the seats. After that, it's a matter of reinstalling these anchor bolts. and reinstalling the piece of trim that goes around the latch for the hatch. Also, you can't really tell, but it's actually getting pretty dark out. The auto iris on the camera hides it well, but uh, this is well after sunset. And lastly, this cover goes on over the spare tire. Okay, it only took all afternoon. Um, I got the part in the mail, got the battery out, uh, pulled out the old harness, put in the new harness, got everything back together, it's like uh, eight at night. But if we take a look at the car now. Look at that, no triangle of doom, no crazy warnings, just a regular working Prius. Engine comes on, starts charging up the battery. It's running a little rough, it's an older car. And then also on our scan gauge here, everything's normal. No codes, um, charging at 6.9 amps. So I'm just glad to have working Prius again. Uh, there's that mouse damage, that's the old wire harness. So all I can say is, damn mice! And I'll try to add some mouse repellent or something, but uh, unfortunately mice chewing on wires, that'd be a problem in any vehicle. I mean, if it would have been some other car, maybe I would have had to have like pulled the engine out to replace the wire harness. So not really any difference there between gas, hybrid, electric, whatever. I'm tired. This was a lot of work and my hand uh, still isn't uh, as good as it should be. So any of this two-handed stuff was really challenging too. Um, but I didn't have to pay somebody else all the money to fix it. Fixed it myself, used a wire harness that a friend sent me. Thanks again, Ned. And so I'm doing okay. Uh, so I hope you learned a little something from this. And until next time, stay charged up. Look at that. It's all chewed off by the mice all through there to the current sensor. Damn mice! Damn, damn mice! Oh, that's too strong a language. Darn mice! Darn you mice! Stupid mice.